महादेवी सुतेशु प्रणतेशु च चरणाश्रय दान कृपाई नमोस्तुते प्रवाजी का प्रबुद्ध प्राण माता जी विल आंसर अवर क्वेश्चन वी हैव एनी क्वेश्चन टू बी पुट ऑन द सब्जेक्ट दट शी टॉक्ट अबाउट और ऑन जनरल इन जनरल अबाउट निवेदिता और होली मदर वी कैन आस्क एनी सच क्वेश्चन एंड शी इज रेडी टू गिव द आंसर So first, Atmaja will raise. Maras, yeah. the youngest one will raise the, the question. <laughs> Get up, tell your name, and then ask the question. Atmaja, and when did? Come nearer. Come nearer. Come nearer. When did Swami Vivekananda meet me, Vedita? Where? Oh, when? When? But where and when? Where? In May 1895 in in. <clears throat> Uh, a, a, a lady, uh, uh, Miss Margeson, um, uh, Elizabeth Margeson, uh, lived in London. In what was sixty, sixty-three? No, number sixty-three, um, Saint George's uh, Street. And uh, and uh, it was at an evening. Uh, he he gave he gave a lecture. Swamiji gave a lecture. And all the time that he was lecturing, Sister Nivedita depicted India and and women at the well and cows coming. <laughs> and, uh, Thank you. Nivedita. <clears throat> Was inspired by Swamiji, and she yes. agreed to come to India, you know, to serve yes. the Indian women. But was there any opposition in her family, or no, or what? No. Any what was no. the Because background that you can no, explain? Yes. Until? No. When uh, before she was born, her her mother felt that if it, that this child, uh, uh, if this child is um, uh, born well, that uh, uh, she should be offered to God. And then uh, the fa her father uh, had some idea that that uh, how he knew some he had some intuition that Nivedita would would one day be called for some higher purpose and that she would uh, either come to India or some uh, uh, maybe he uh, knew because his 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 friend uh, one friend of his. Um, I saw Nivedita when she was a child, and uh, he said something about India that she would that uh, uh, she would go to India or something like this. And the the father told told his wife, when she ha when she hears that call, don't stop her. Don't stop her. This is her her destiny. And and so. Her, her parents only uh, were encouraging. They were they uh, knew that the, that she had some higher destiny. But it took some time before she met Swamiji. She had she was uh, um, uh, 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 not only a teacher. She was a principal of a school, and um, she was well connected with all the intellectual people. Uh, uh, in uh, London at that time, and George Bernard Shaw and uh, um, uh, William Butler Yeats, all, all uh, famous uh, writers and, and uh, intellectuals of that time. Um, and uh, uh, she could have done anything. She was so brilliant. She could have made a wonderful uh, intellectual career for herself. And and been a, a most prominent person in England, but she was drawn to something else, much higher. So when she met first, um, my Swamiji. So what made her? What was the calling in her? How she felt? Uh, how was she drawn? Uh, well, at first she argued with Swamiji, but the, the, all the time that uh, Swamiji uh, spoke. She would interrupt him, but Swamiji, <laughs> uh, and she would have <laughs> have something something to object or question, 
Um, so she, she wasn't an easy disciple, I think. But, but um, um, Swamiji's tremendous personality impressed her. It was mostly his personality that impressed her. And she had within her that, those seeds of renunciation. So she, uh, she when, when, when he spoke about India, then she felt inspired to um, do something in India. Was her family involved with arts and culture, or how did she get involved with all of this, with Yeats and Brown? Well, I'm sorry, can you start again? <laughs> Was her family involved in arts and culture, or how did she get involved? No, her, her family was not. Uh, her family was mainly spiritual. Her father was a preacher, um, and uh, um, he died very early. So uh, I don't think that they influenced her all in, in this cultural. <coughs> How did she get she, involved in us? How did she get involved in with these intellectuals? Well, um, she herself had that bent. Uh, intellectual bent, and she, um, uh, uh, she, she, actually, she was the main uh, person to start this Sesame Club, which uh, was a gathering of intellectuals. So uh, there, there was that circle of intellectuals that she was engaged with, and she was a teacher, so she, uh, um, she had that uh, intellectual contact. But uh, I don't know how she met individually, how she met them, I, I can't say. I don't know. I don't think it's written anywhere how she met them. But because there was the Sesame Club, then, then they were all attracted to have this, these talks together and, and, and uh, stimulate on one another uh, intellectually. And they were all, they all had some contact with Indian philosophy. And um, uh, George Bernard Shaw was also a friend of Josephine MacLeod and um, um, uh, other people associated with Swamiji. And, and uh, William Butler Yeats, he, he also expressed these ideas <laughs> of uh, Indian philosophy. So they all, they all had some, something together. Yes? <coughs> Can't hear you. Yeah. You speak very softly. <laughs> Shout. What brought Vivita to England? What her, brought her to England? Um, her, I think her father brought her to England at one point. Uh, 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 they they moved to England. I don't know if it's her father or, or just her mother. I don't. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't know exactly. Her father brought. Her father brought. Her. Yeah, he, he got another position in a church. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. But after some time, he went and did his studies and got ordained as a minister. And she stayed with her grandmother? She stayed with her grandparents. But a question to you, I don't know if you know, whether it were, was it her maternal or paternal grandparents? That's also a details. What is, uh, who was the Hamilton? Was he uh, paternal grandfather or maternal grandfather? Hamilton? Maternal. Maternal. Because he was involved in the freedom fighting movement also. And he was in for Ireland. 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 Actually, after Navidita's passing in 19 or 17. In 22. 22? Yeah, after passing. So this was still going on. But, it, but Ireland's fight for freedom inspired India also. And, and many of the um, freedom fighters of, 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 in Ireland also helped the, the same people in India, the, 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 they, were, they, they communicated and, and they also helped. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Patel and yeah. Shubhash yeah. Chandra, yeah. they were in yeah. close contact yeah. with the rebellions here. They had a common enemy. 
at the Paris <laughs> at, the, at the Paris Parliament or convention there, there were also Irish revolutionaries that would have attended that. Do you happen to know or have any evidence whether she met any of those? Oh no, I don't know. I don't know that those details of. It would be, be interesting, interesting to find out. Yes, yeah. Yeah. And also, there, there, if you talk to Jean McGuinness there, you had the opportunity to do that on Wednesday. Yes. Uh, she says that uh, there, is a, there is a hearsay that she secretly met some Irish revolutionaries when she was traveling by ship. But I don't know if you've ever heard that or have No, I have never heard that. So just hearsay, uh, actually. Oh, yeah. Mataji, do we know anything about Nivedita's feeling or reaction after she had the first meeting with uh, Shaladama? Oh, yes. Yes, she wrote about it to Nell Hammond in, in, a, in a letter. How did they communicate? Yeah, that's... She wrote a letter to... No, how did they communicate means how Sharada or oh. uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sister Nivedita, how did they communicate? I mean, uh, she did not know Bengali yeah, and she was, was not Yeah, it wasn't yeah. a matter of language. Mm. It was not a matter of language. Mm. But but uh, she could feel uh, 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 how Mother was so affectionate to her because she was Swamiji's daughter. <laughs> Generally, Swamiji's disciple Sadananda used to be with Sister Nivedita, oh, and he okay. would many times translate her things oh, to her okay. in Bengali. Yes, he 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 was with her constantly. Constantly, he was with her. No, wherever she would go, he would be with her. He would go along when she went on lecture tour, and um, uh, when she when she <coughs> went, uh, uh, during the plague in Calcutta, he also swept the streets. Yes, and um, he was the uh, her main uh, interpreter and and uh, go and he did save also to Nivedita. Yes, especially uh, when she was sick and all. But the uh, conservative Bengali fam uh, families there, they immediately accepted Nivedita because Holy Mother. <coughs> yes, that helped yeah, uh, tremendous, yes. tremendously. Uh -huh. Otherwise, in, in those days, Western uh, uh, people were in there. I think Gopal and Ma also played a very important role. Yes, mm -hmm. she also That's right. would stayed with Nivedita in right. her last days, uh -huh. which was started un unthinkable. Exactly. Unthinkable because she was such an orthodox person. She was. She, mm, and, uh, <laughs> Is there any incident recorded like, like what Nivedita experienced either in dream or because of like all? Yes. Yes, so Nivedita herself said, writes about it. Yeah, what is that? Can you...? Mm. Well, when, uh, here and there she writes about different experiences that she's had. Mm. She has written about her... Um, 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 she had vision of Mother Kali. She saw her, her through some dark door. or She describes it. I, I can't repeat that, how, how exactly she describes but. Uh, she uh, un, uh, she had uh, um, some uh, special love for um, Mother Kali and significance of Kali, uh, of the Divine Mother. Uh, so um, she wrote something about that, that experience. And also well, um, when she was in Dakshineshwar, and she, she uh, uh, had some experience of Sri Ramakrishna uh, and, and, and uh, spoke to him and um, uh, also prayed to him for the others who were not there, uh, the Mrs. Bull and, and because Mrs. Bull and Miss McLeod were with her at the beginning, and then and then they had they went back to their countries, and she was then uh, uh, of the three she was alone left in, in India. So, so uh, she was then uh, thinking of them and praying for them, and and uh, she uh, she was uh, she wrote about it that how she was talking to Sri Ramakrishna. 
but there are other incidents also. And um, throughout her life, she had experiences like that. She must have been extraordinary, uh, an extraordinary spiritual personality also, if Swami Brahmananda, uh, sitting near her, felt uh, um, uplifted in her presence. And Swami Brahmananda was of all um, 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 more spiritually elevated than even Swami Vivekananda, who we feel is part of the avatar, than uh, uh, part of Sri Ramakrishna. How, how uh, much uh, um, Nivedita was appreciated by them. I have a question regarding um, technology and uh, Nivedita and uh, what is said about her school and uh, obviously contributions she made yes. to, to the education in India. But uh, uh, she was also uh, instrumental in forming uh, a National College of Education, Bengal, which is the Jadavpur University now. Uh -huh. But not much is told about that. No, yeah, we, we yes. don't know much about that. Yeah, Do you, can you tell us something? Yeah, yeah because I mean, I, I, I studied in Jadavpur University and yes. uh, my undergraduate degree uh -huh. in engineering, which has produced you know, talented engineers uh -huh. who are working all over the world, contributing not just to the India, but all over the world actually. Mm. And uh, uh, I, I think she was closely associated with Aurobindo Ghosh at that time. Yes. Uh -huh and also others, but uh, I have heard that she actually requested Raja Shubhadmalli to philanthropically donate that piece of land where the university was formed. And oh. she was instrumental in forming the National College of Education Bengal. That wasn't given the university status at that time because of the political situation as Tagore faced similar problems when he was forming his university in Shantaketa. Oh. Uh, but they started that uh, as a technological university and was then formed oh, as a university later. But the striking thing is that uh, I'm again told that she said that for the country's e economic development, manufacturing is the key, and therefore they started chemical engineering and mechanical engineering there, mm -hmm. because they could produce what is needed for the country, unlike uh, the other counterpart, University of Bengal Engineering College, they had civil engineering. And she said that unless the country is free, civil engineering <coughs> will not do any good to the country they be serving other people, and that's what they did because they wanted to serve their own needs and so on. And uh, I, I think, I mean, I've seen that portrait of Nivedita in the boardroom in Jadavpur University. Okay. But, uh, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. But, but not much is not told about it. Not much is this. told about yeah. it, unfortunately. Yeah. What is the reason behind that? I mean, in why fact, we feel surprised. The, first time the, the national thing was started because people were expelled after the partition thing. <laughs> Those who protested, uh, they were kicked out. And those who didn't like the British thing, they resigned, left. And so they had to be educated. And so there was a town hall meeting in Calcutta where Shubhud Mollik and other people were present. And uh, Shubhud Mollik spoke in English and said, it's a disgrace that I'm speaking on this occasion, not in Bengali, but in English, but that's the way I was trained. And I am going to put down one lakh rupees. And people said, he said, I'm not such a rich man, but for this thing, for the education, I put one lakh. And then people gave him the name Raja, and they carried him on their shoulders. And then uh, he became Raja Shubhad Mollik. And many other people then gathered around. Uttar Paraj Maharaja, he gave money, and a council was formed. Uh, Nivedita was part of that. And the guiding light was Shotish Mukherjee. So Shotish Mukherjee was the one was the guiding spirit, and he kept a low profile. He did. And he was able to appoint Aurobindo Ghosh as the first principal. And, and then, as you say, they immediately from the word go, they, it, the education was the head, the heart, and the hand. They had all three components. And so I could go on, but <laughs> so, uh, you said a fair amount of things. So it was a very fascinating part of the history, and there is a lovely a uh, book written on it by oh, yeah. two professors of Jadavpur University, oh. Uma Mukherjee and uh, so two historians, Hori, oh. Hori, Hori Dash Mukherjee. And it's a very lovely little book on uh, the whole history, the story of what oh. happened. But, but I'm told that Sister Nivedita was influential and instrumental and influential. Uh -huh. Yes, she was. Including Aurobindo. And she, not just influential, she was, was able to get people from yeah. Columbia, Stanford University, yeah. and so on 
who come and give talks where, and these things. And the person from Stanford said, people always go to England. They should yeah. consider going to America. The cost is much less. They can go to Stanford for very little money and the education is not bad. <laughs> this, is, this is very interesting, your point, that because in those days there was close connection, obviously, yes. with uh, England and the British uh, Isles, obviously, but uh, in Jadavpur University, the mechanical engineering labs were donated, well, a lot of the instruments were donated by the U.S. universities, actually, yes. and the model is all, had been always based on the U.S. education model, actually. <coughs> I, I have a, a fascination in this, so I've got the full collection of all the Dawn Society and magazines at home. So I just thought that I mean, because I'm not uh, stored about her and her contribution, but she's not only from schools but universities as well. Sister wrote regularly for Dawn magazine. <coughs> Sister <coughs> wrote regularly for that Dawn magazine. Hmm. And many interesting articles <coughs> came out on Swedish. She has another question. Another one. <laughs> <laughs> most active. <laughs> How did Nivedita make a school? How did she make a school? Oh, did that I was a very interesting story. Nobody wanted to send their daughter to a to um, a, a foreign woman's school. <coughs> they didn't trust her, and and uh, Swamiji uh, um, <coughs> uh, convened a meeting of uh, Sri Ramakrishna's other of, uh, householder disciples, and mostly uh, Sri Ramakrishna's householder disciples, and uh, they all they were all sitting there. And Nivedita gave a speech about her proposed school. And then, when when she told them the, her plan to have a nationalistic school and all, then she asked uh, four volunteers to so, who will give their daughter to be educated in in this school. Not a single person offered. Not a single person dared to give their their daughter to her school. <clears throat> they didn't trust the idea, and and uh, then Swamiji had come kind of stealthily, quiet, um, quietly into the room and, and behind everybody. They didn't see him, and all of a sudden, <clears throat> Swamiji's friend Hara Mohan he got a push from behind, and. Um, <laughs> Swamiji pushed him to make him, made him to stand up, and, and he said, "Say, I'll give my daughter. I will give my daughter." <laughs> and he forced him, and then he made some others also to offer their daughters. So it was Swamiji's, uh, with Swamiji's help, she got a few children, and with those children she started the school. But then it gradually it grew. <laughs> And she had a tough time getting children to go to the school because that time Orthodox children couldn't come out and, and they couldn't be seen outside. So um, um, Balaram Bose had sent a, a, a horse carriage to, to uh, bring these children in their carriages. So then they gradually joined the school. So Dinesh sent his daughter went to the school. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so one, one. She stayed in 16 Bhospala Lane or 17 Bhospala Lane? Both. In both. First she was in 16 and then and then <coughs> to 17, where she would have more space. And also, um, uh, Sister Christine also had uh, needed some space. <coughs> but then uh, a holy mother was... Holy Mother also stayed with her in, in number 17. And it's interesting, in Dublin, uh, our Diveta house is 17 room in Dublin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. really interesting. And it was inaugurated on 17th June. Wow. <laughs> yeah.
more than 17 people. <laughs> 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 so what is, is, is that a plan or is it no. coincidence? No, it was coincidence. It's a coincidence. But there's nothing but, called coincidence. Yes, yes. <laughs> but if you see mother, I think uh, the interesting thing is like, if you want to be like, you need a proper guru to, you know, to identify your potential and then bring it like, you know, so it, it's like, Coming back to the same point, same <laughs> you need a guru because if Vivekananda was not there, so he was not there, maybe you yes. could have not found. She him. herself said, "I would have been like yes. a headless torso." Yes. If that, those are the words she used. Headless if torso. I hadn't met Swamiji, I would have been like a headless torso. Did you see that uh, film made by? Or, uh, no, uh, I haven't. Seen. Oh, yeah, no, was, I didn't see. Oh, you didn't see if you, if you a kindly show it to me sometime, I will see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Show him, show her. Yeah, you it's a beautiful it. film. Very well done. We can see it today if you yes. have time. Yes. Yes. It's a very nice film. Yes, we watch it. Yeah. It's a very beautiful film. <coughs> I think there are no more questions. Only the. In her birthplace, tomorrow, uh, day after tomorrow, you are going there. Yes. Mm. So the exact house is still not yet found out. Ah. Only the street could be the identified, identified, but there not the There must be some way. In her letters or anything, would you find? Because you have been doing no. research on that. No. Um, I, I didn't search for it. That's, that's one reason I didn't find it. <laughs> then, uh, I could try. And also, there, there may have been some some plan, some um, in in some office sometime. Maybe it's all destroyed by now. So there's, a, there's a reference to a street number on her birth certificate uh -huh. on Scott Street. But sometimes uh, they didn't have any land uh, land uh, mm -hmm. uh, office an office where they would keep track of so lots of land. Or, uh, there may be. Uh, Maybe at that time every, there was no house city numbers. Every city does have some. No, there were no house numbers. Are there. there were house Even numbers. Even in Kamapagur, there were yeah. there are old um, yeah. uh, uh, records of the land uh, yeah. to whom this plot belongs or this yeah. area belongs. No, the yeah. the number yeah. of Different the street times. is mentioned in her birth certificate, but oh. um, or registration of that. But, but no, no whether particular what area. the numbering system was in those days, we don't know. Yeah. So whether it was at the top of the street or the bottom, when you go on Wednesday, you'll see it's quite a short street. Mm -hmm. But uh, whether it was the top of the street or the bottom of the street. Now there's an inclination that it is uh, at a particular place where there is currently a, a what used to be a wool mer merchant's place. Mm -hmm. And uh, that uh, and currently it's a, it's a, a clothing shop. Mm -hmm. And they can trace the ownership of that back to the 1800s. I'm not quite mm -hmm. sure. I think 1890 something, probably. So um, the person, the owners of the shop, who've been there for a number of generations, yes. have promised that they will look into it. Oh, I hope so, they they can find it. Yeah. Like, that's very good. Mm -hmm. That'll be a really important bit of research. But Swamiji in rural Ireland and rural England, there was no house numbers long back in the 18th century. That was only by the name of the family. Family name was prominent. So that so may be only the identification because until recently in rural Ireland, there was no house numbers. Just they, they allotted, I think, three years back, year code. But in that specific building where the Maharaj was telling now, <coughs> that the year is mentioned. It is sculpted uh -huh. on the, uh, so, the so 1800 something it is there. Uh -huh. So it's a old building, you can see that. Any more questions or discussions? Well, there was more information than discussion and then question. That's good. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot. <laughs> yeah. That's good. I think there's one uh, one thing that I picked up uh, from your collection of uh, uh, newspaper reports and so on, mm -hmm. uh, contemporary writings and contemporary reports. 
that when Sister Nivedi came to Ireland uh, in 1908, August, she was carrying the ashes of Mrs. Bull's mother. Would that, would that be correct? No. Or Le Bull's Sister mother. Bull's there was mother. reference to she's carrying ashes. It says her mother's ashes. Now, oh. could it mean her mother? Her mother's, her own mother's oh. ashes. Her mother, her mother, passed mother, away, mother passed away, away in, 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 18, in 1908. Okay, but that was maybe later in the year, was it? That October, November? No, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, my understanding is that she would have passed away, I think, oh. October or November, something like that. No, I have to, I have to read it and mm. see. Mm. So yeah, I don't think it could have been her <coughs> mother's ashes. Oh. And her mother's ashes, anyway, were interned in Torrington, mm -hmm. uh, with along with uh, her father's grave. Yeah. Well, in the same place, a yes, statue of Nivedita is coming up uh, next month. Our bill, yes. but uh, manager Maharaj is coming to inaugurate that oh, in Torrington. Mm -hmm. So it is said that uh, her parents' ashes were kept there. Uh -huh. So. You wonder whether why she uh, had to bring her mother's ashes to Dublin mm. and where it was kept. Maybe b because of that sentiment that it, w it should be with the father's ashes. Mm. See, the timings don't make any sense. But they're so, a Christian, right? They're uh, very, so the references the Christians, to... Christians, right? Yes. Uh, is but they're supposed to be buried as opposed to... She was writing ashes. in yeah. connection with Sarah Bull. Uh -huh. And so Sarah Bull's mother had passed away. So whether she was Sarah Bull's mother passed away <coughs> much, much earlier, yeah. much, much earlier. So we don't know whose ashes she was carrying. The other alternative would be I, I, I Bose's mother's legend. ashes, I don't know. I see it in point out. I, yeah. I don't recall now because it yeah. was not important to me, but mm. then okay. I read it again. And but see. in the letter she says, Did is there a book where you can see the writings of Nivedita's letters? Oh yes, oh, yes. yes. So the handwriting you mean? Oh. Yes. So also for your information, there is a movement. Uh, to create a statue of Sister Nivedita for Dublin, or for Ireland actually. Mm. And uh, because the Rabindranath Tagore's bust is there in Stevens Green, yeah. the idea was to modify it and put a matching bust there, next door to Rabindranath Tagore. Mm. Oh. So we're gathering oh. some information sufficient to make a presentation to the City Council and the OPW to see what we can do about that. If there are no questions, there are no answers. Any more questions? Yes. Did this is an event I trust someone in particular to continue her work? Did she worry that when when she, mm -hmm. she passes away her work will stop and did she did she train someone or did she trust someone to continue her work afterwards? No. So how did it happen? How, once she passed away, what happened to the school and who took care of it? Oh, it Swami Saradananda, <coughs> who was then uh, the secretary of the Ramakrishna Mat, um, <coughs> uh, 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 was uh, determined that the school would continue and uh, um, so he, he saw to it that it, it would continue. Uh, they, they, were, uh, he, they formed some um, committee. Uh, and then, uh, and then uh, um, uh, Mrs. Ole Bull had uh, wanted uh, to uh, uh, give money f to that school, but um, it, it, um, she couldn't get it. It couldn't be gotten because there was some legal obstruction. So, um, 
then at that time, um, Mrs. Olivo's brother, um, was a, who was a lawyer, he, uh, he tried to uh, continue giving funds for Nivedita School because he knew that that was what Mrs. Poe had wanted, that she wanted to support the school. So um, if, um, there perhaps some money from Mrs. Olibull's brother. <clears throat> and also Swami Saradananda tried his best to continue, have the school continue. Later Sardama took over the school, or it was handed over to them. And now Sardamat is conducting the school. And in terms of the people, the pupils, <coughs> the pupils that she, she trained, she educated, Yes. was there someone in particular that continued a bit of that role to, to teach more women, or do we know of anyone? Who well, like Sister the Christine pupils? was also there in, in uh, teaching in the school. So, uh, she uh, took over the principalship for some time, and then uh, Sister Christine's um, <clears throat> friend, uh, um, uh, Sister Sudira, an in Indian lady, an um, Indian young lady, she, she took over the school for some time. And then, anyway, that did, that did. But Swami Saradananda was <clears throat> the kind of guardian of that school for some time. Until his death, which was in, in 20, 29, I think. Swami Saradananda passed away in 29. He dedicated the, <clears throat> he dedicated the new building, which is in the present school, he dedicated the hall of that new building. The, the, a very large prayer hall of that building. Dedicated it in the name of Mrs. Poe because um, she, she um, was the main support of the school. <coughs> 